All right, uh, I'm Ravi Maduri. Uh, I have a colleague of mine, uh, Dina Sulake. We're gonna talk about global genomics, and we already, a uh, few of the presentations already talked about global genomics. So, uh, so we're gonna tell you all about it, hopefully in whatever we can in 20 minutes, and uh, if, if you're interested, talk to us after the presentation. Um, hope you're all having a good uh, Globus world. Um, I know that I was going after Carl Kesselman, so I got myself a double espresso okay. shot so that I can sound as excited as Carl, but, but hopefully let's see how it goes. Um, so Globus Genomics is a product, is, a, is an interesting uh, vertical offering that we created um, and, uh, and we released it as a product last week at, uh, at a Bio IT World Conference and a lot of interest, a lot of uh, uh, very positive feedback and a, a very good uptake. So, uh, so I'm quite excited to tell you all uh, because, you know, as much as I like to hang out at bio conferences, I'm not a biologist. Uh, you are my peeps, so, so I feel uh, close at home and, and I'm quite excited to share this excitement with you as well. Uh, so this is, uh, this is an outline, it's very boring. Um, so uh, I'm gonna talk about the, the problem we're trying to solve uh, in the in next gen sequencing analysis space. Um, and, um, uh, uh, and I'll describe what Globus Genomics is all about and how, how we, we try to solve the problem in next sequencing analysis. And uh, um, talk about how we went, up, uh, went about building uh, Globus Genomics. And, and uh, we really took Globus Online as a platform and, and we tried to build uh, off of Globus Online. So, uh, so uh, I, I think that's, that, that's the part that I'm really, uh, really interested in. I'm hoping that you guys could latch on to that uh, as to how we went about building a vertical product uh, using Globus Online as a platform. Um, I'm gonna talk about a few success stories, though I'm not qualified to talk about success stories. They're all biology problems and they're all solving some important stuff. Uh, and Dina knows a little bit more about it than I do, so he's gonna talk more about it. Um, and then I'm gonna talk about some of the future things that we're, we're working on that I'm quite excited about. Um, and then um, uh, Dina will walk you through some of the capabilities that we've uh, enabled in Globus Online. And um, uh, it's gonna follow off very, uh, really well with what uh, Kyle and Carl were talking about in terms of catalog and how uh, you could uh, you could uh, organize your data sets into uh, different metadata, different uh, uh, data sets, and how you can take a part of those data sets and send, up, send them off to your analysis. And then we can, we can uh, break for questions and uh, Q&A after that. So, um, Isilon guy was here and uh, Pat was here and talking about some of the challenges in sequencing analysis is uh, traditionally uh, the next gen sequencing analysis space, um, you know, it's uh, the infrastructure providers in the room will identify this with, this is the case with every other, every science nowadays. Uh, data in general is distributed across multiple um, locations um, and uh, this is especially true with sequencing analysis because uh, there, there are a few core sequencing facilities around the country that do a lot of sequencing for, for researchers and uh, the data is distributed in, this, in these centers. Um, and um, typically the, uh, the, the researchers who are sending these tumor samples out to get uh, uh, sequencing done, uh, they need this data to do their analysis and do their science. And, um, Right now, uh, this is the state of art. You know, FedEx is uh, is by far the most used in in next gen sequencing because all the big sequencing centers use FedEx to transfer data sets. And uh, if you're lucky, sometimes they all uh, have an FTP server that they will give you a password. And um, uh, especially when I mean you're on your own after that, um, uh, this is okay when you're transferring a few gigabytes of data, but. Uh, you know, if you're trying to transfer terabytes of data, then it becomes quite painful. Um, and it's very inefficient, and anybody, uh, you know, this is a room, you, I might get actually lucky, I keep asking this question everywhere I go. Uh, do you know when the FTP RFC uh, was written? It's, you know, it was written when the networks were very slow, and um, it was written for a generation of networks that is uh, at least a couple decades uh, uh, ago, and, and um, uh, it's by far not suitable for, for the networks that we have today, but that's the kind of the um, data movement mechanism that is provided at these sequencing centers. And um, uh, this is one of the, you know, one of the issues is that uh, 
uh, for some reason I can't see the slide on my, so I have to turn around and look at what the point is. Um, so th the data, um, in order to do the analysis, you know, it needs to be available at the local uh, infrastructure for analysis that you have. Um, so, and, and then the, the, the way people, researchers, typically move the data from uh, the data that they get from sequence center to wherever they can do analysis on is again using SCP and FTP to, to their local clusters. So, so now we have, we have say, say for example, so now the data is, is there and, and the next part of the problem is how do I anal analyze this data? And uh, uh, tip, I, I kind of uh, took an example of a variant calling pipeline because Carl and others talked about variance analysis and this is one of the pipelines that uh, the next in sequencing analysis people could recognize very quickly. Um, you know, this is, uh, and people typically resort to using shell scripting to do the analysis, which by, Definitely not a bad idea to do, uh, to do analysis, uh, but if you're a bioinformatician or if you're a biologist who's trained and got a PhD from, uh, you know, to do research in cancer and other important problems, uh, this stuff will make you want, to, will make you a, a IT person or, or you have to kind of become a, a really sophisticated programmer or a hacker in order to do your science. So, um, you know, there are a lot of people who are very familiar with command line and, and biologists have become programmers because they have to do their science. And, um, and typically, you know, they, 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 do this, uh, they do this analysis using these, these steps. They manually move data to where they can do analysis. And, uh, um, you know, next in sequencing analysis as any other domain is, has a lot of really nice open source tools uh, that you can use to analyze your data. Uh, but a lot of open source tools require a lot of thinking of uh, dependency management and a lot of other things you would want to uh, be careful about. When, uh, and then they write shell scripts to kind of automate some of these tasks that, uh, uh, to execute these pipelines. Uh, um, and uh, these scripts that, uh, that biologists routinely write to do large-scale sequencing data analysis are, um, are traditionally written by one person and they're only useful for that person. They're, very hard, uh, you know, you can't use my shell script because you didn't write it, you know, sort of, you know, so it's very hard to kind of transfer knowledge from one postdoc to another postdoc from one researcher to another researcher. So um, it's sort of, it becomes really difficult to maintain and transfer knowledge. And um, we have uh, one of the examples that we had, one of the case studies that uh, early adopters of global genomics, um, he's a uh, big uh, researcher and two of his postdocs left uh, within a couple of weeks of each other um, because they had very good positions that they have uh, offers that they have accepted. Um, and then his whole research kind of came to a standstill because um, they took away with them a lot of knowledge on how to do the analysis. So when you, when you, have, when you have kind of uh, uh, embedded your knowledge in sort of um, these manual uh, shell scripts or things that you've written, you're, you're kind of, uh, it's kind of hard to transition that knowledge to a new member in the lab. Um, so we've looked at it, uh, we looked at this problem and we realized that there's a great opportunity for, uh, for us uh, because at CI we like hard problems and, and uh, at Globus Online we try to uh, tackle these multidisciplinary uh, uh, problems and provide solutions. So one of the first things we wanted to do is we wanted to take uh, the FedEx and SAP out of the equation and um, as a researcher you would, um, you know, it would be very useful to kind of connect um, all the uh, uh, places where you could get data from and where you want to analyze the data at connected via Globus Online endpoint. So, uh, so we wanted to use Globus, on, Globus Transfer uh, because it provides a really uh, high performance reliable data transfer. So we wanted to solve the data management side of it using some of the services that Globus Online provides uh, so that we could connect all these endpoints and all the places where you can do data analysis using high, um, high speed uh, reliable file transfer service that Globus Online provides. And then for the analysis side of it, uh, we wanted to uh, we wanted to make it really easy for researchers to 
define their pipelines, to run them at scale, to, uh, to kind of do their science at scale uh, without actually becoming, becoming an IT expert or becoming a hacker on their own respect. So, so we took an open source pipeline technology uh, called Galaxy. Uh, it's a uh, open source uh, web-based uh, 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 workflow uh, tool, and we've integrated that with Globus Online, um, and we uh, we kind of created an infrastructure uh, to run this analysis at scale on on Amazon cloud computing uh, um, uh, resources. So. Uh, Globus Genomics are um, sort of provide a nice and easy way uh, for researchers to define um, pipelines. We we have some of the best practices pipelines that we created from our early collaborations and that are made available for researchers. So, if a researcher if a researcher would want to use Globus Genomics, they get a great value right out of the box because we've integrated a lot of public, um, you know, a lot of uh, sequencing centers, endpoints with Globus Genomics, and also um, made it really possible to kind of scale up this analysis that we have created in Globus Genomics. So, uh, some level, some of this uh, was already talked about. Uh, we streamlined uh, moving and managing data uh, using Globus Online, and, uh, and the scale at which you can run uh, is pretty high because we've, we've managed to integrate it with, uh, uh, with the scale that Amazon provides. So some of these features that uh, you know, all of this um, is a is an interesting. You know, we've it's an integration um, product that we've integrated some of the open source component and some of the services, and that Globus Online provides, and we've integrated it using some of the best practices, both with res with respect to how you could move and manage data sets uh, at uh, at large scale, and how you would uh, scale your analysis using uh, some of the best practices that Amazon prescribes to to the. Uh, uh, for the for their users, uh, so we have uh, created Globus Genomics, which is a sort of a professionally managed uh, and supported platform. And uh, um, uh, for researchers, they are sort of uh, you know um, they can get their value or they can do their analysis without having to worry about or without having to get uh, expertise on how to use Amazon, uh, because uh, the scale at which the resources that are used to do the analysis are automatically are kind of integrated into the Globus Genomics product. And uh, as I talked about before, uh, we have some best practices pipelines uh, to do some interesting next-gen sequencing analysis. Uh, Dina is going to talk, uh, Dina is going to show some of these pipelines that we have created. Uh, we have uh, RNA-seq analysis, exome analysis, and chip sequencing analysis. These are sort of your, uh, your sort of bread and butter for a next-gen sequencing in, uh, researcher. Um, so as Ian kind of mentioned in his keynote um, or uh, on in his talks, we kind of created some of the mundane steps that you have to do as a researcher uh, right out of the box. So you don't have to recreate them or have to spend time on how to do this, uh, these aspects um, again and again, because there's really no lot of uh, innovation in those, uh, in, in those aspects. Um, we also have uh, a lot of uh, uh, useful bioinformatics tools that uh, we made available uh, in our Galaxy, um, in our platform. Um, the other thing, we, tr we uh, because because we are computational people, um, we also uh, look at uh, the next and sequencing anal analysis tools from a computational perspective. What what I mean by that is that um, you know we 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 run these analysis tools and we kind of create computational profiles uh, for for these tools to kind of figure out how much CPU, how much I/O, um, kind of create a profile for for the tool so that we can we can run that tool at an uh, on an appropriate Amazon. Uh, resource automatically. So for one of the questions that I get uh, frequently is that um, a lot of de novo and uh, assembly uh, programs require a lot of memory. Uh, so when we kind of take those, look at those analysis routines, uh, we kind of uh, run those uh, analysis on on large Amazon nodes rather than running them on a smaller mm -hmm. node. So we kind of do uh, a bunch of uh, uh, profiling of these bioinformatics tools uh, so we can run them on right uh, resource um, at the right price. Um, 
we also uh, have a very great support team. We, we provide technical support, and we also have uh, a, a bioinformatician who has a lot of experience in running these pipelines and doing this analysis uh, on staff. So he um, and uh, Alex is also in the, in the, in the room uh, somewhere. I can't see him. Uh, but he, he does a lot of, he does, he does provide a lot of value to, to researchers. And um, um, I talked about this before. We integrated some of the uh, uh, Nexon sequencing um, provider, service providers like Broad Institute and Perkin Elmer uh, and set up Globus Online endpoints at these places uh, so that researchers who get their sequencing done at these centers uh, can leverage Globus Genomics and, get, uh, uh, and Globus Transfer to get the data sets off of the sequence centers quite easily and, and rapidly. And uh, we have a uh, subscription-based uh, pricing. So um, as we talked about before, we are nonprofit. Where uh, our goal is to advance the, the researchers and and make and empower them to do their science quickly and cost at a at a really lower cost. So our goal is to kind of essentially get to a model where we can sustain us and our team. So this is the the interesting bit uh, that uh, how how we went about building Globus Genomics as a vertical product offering. Um, so we we've leveraged Globus Online quite heavily uh, as a platform as a service, and and uh, um, uh, and we were able to outsource or we were able to rely on um, on Globus Online for identity management, uh, access control, and data transfer and sharing. And and we're going to leverage more and more capabilities as they come along in Globus Online. Like for example, one of the capabilities that we just talked about called Globus Sharing, uh, we're going to leverage that to uh, sorry Globus Catalog. To, to make it really easy for researchers to manage their data sets and analyze them using Globus Genomics. So, um, uh, you know, it, and we also leveraged, uh, you know, Amazon uh, infrastructure for uh, an outsourced lot of compute and storage capabilities to Amazon and manage it. Um, using um, using Amazon API, um, you know David Skinner kind of touched about uh, talked about you know, the importance of APIs and and services, but uh, but also you know as a as somebody who would who would develop products you know having a a platform and a service that I can rely on and having a great API that I can interact with uh, kind of uh, makes it really easy for me to focus on my value proposition, my product, and, and the capability that I'm about to deliver. So, um, you know, Globus Online enjoyed a great reliability. Uh, we had three nines of, av um, um, of uh, availability. Um, of uptime of the service itself, and Amazon has been pretty reliable for what we're doing. So um, using these capabilities, we were able to uh, kind of take it for granted that, yeah, we can do identity management. Yes, we can do access control. Let's focus on what we're trying to offer. So we're able to leverage Globus Online for a lot platform uh, and build on top of it to provide these interesting capabilities. Um, so as I said, you know, uh, if you're building a product, if you're building a new capability, uh, it's great uh, uh, to kind of depend on services like Globus Online and Amazon because it allows you to focus on the problem uh, or the service that you're providing. Um, and, and in the process of building uh, Globus Genomics, we, we learned a lot uh, of, of uh, how to scale analysis, how to run things, at, um, uh, how to do identity management, how to integrate with, uh, how to increase the value that we provide our researchers with uh, with the product. So these are some of the things that we're working on. Well, we're we're going to integrate with Globus Catalog. Uh, we're going to work with integrating Global Sharing uh, with Globus Online Sharing, um, and um, uh, we also have some some plans on on using Amazon other Amazon services like Glacier and S3, so that we can provide tiered storage um, archiving purposes uh, for for archiving purposes for researchers, and. Um, um, the other thing that I'm also keen on working on is to provide uh, other computational modalities like MPI and MapReduce to Globus Genomics platform uh, so that we can kind of automate the process of analysis using new and uh, better computational modalities without, uh, uh, you know, automatically based on the, the kind of analysis that researchers researcher would want to do. So. 
we had some great early adopters uh, who helped us uh, quite a bit um, in, uh, in, uh, in knowing this space and building a better product. Uh, ONL's lab was uh, talked about in the catalog demo as well. Uh, they do, um, you know, they, they figure out, uh, they do large scale genome analysis to, to figure out why some cancers relapse and so, uh, uh, some, can some patients get a relapse in cancer. Um, and, and as you probably noted, uh, I'm not an expert, so, so I, you know, I, I can only think that this is a great science, and we are working on enabling it. So I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, so they, uh, one, one of the things is they, they, this lab was was kind of limited by um, they were outsourcing their genome analysis to a commercial provider, and and they were. Comp they kind of had issues with uh, that they couldn't really, uh, they, they couldn't live with the black box analysis that this commercial service is providing. Uh, so they, they, they really wanted more flexibility uh, in kind of defining their pipeline and be able to scale. And, um, and uh, the, the analysis provider also was pretty cost prohibitive for a research group. Uh, so we kind of went into, we kind of started working with the group um, and, and understood their pipeline, created the pipeline, and were able to run the analysis with a 10x improvement in the, in the speed at, at which they can do this analysis and with the, with the cost reduction of, of the factor of 10 as well. Uh, so as you can see, it's, you know, we're really trying to accelerate the rate at which people can do science uh, at, a, at, a, at a price. So, we should definitely use Globus Genomics. Um, so the other example we have is uh, Dobbins Lab at the University of Washington, and uh, Dr. Dobbins is a great uh, uh, is a leader in uh, neurogenerative disorders uh, at uh, at Seattle, and um, you know he had um, he's. Uh, kind of limited by the amount of resources that his local IT department was providing him with, uh, and his science, uh, the ability of, for him to do science was limited by the amount of resources he had and, the, and his computational capabilities. And we worked with him in, in using Globus Genomics, and, and they were able to do a lot of science, and, and the Dina will probably talk some, of, some, some about that as well. Um, so, because we, we, we like doing one thing, if we're successful, we like to do it multiple times in different domains. So um, we liked uh, the, the global genomic stuff really worked out very well for us. So uh, we looked at it and we started to uh, figure out how to adopt it in other, other sciences as well. So for that, uh, we've been working on cosmology um, and um, um, uh, using on uh, NERSC, and, and uh, we have a proteomics, uh, uh, we have a group that we work with um, on proteomics analysis as well. Uh, cardiovascular research diseases is another uh, domain where we're actively pursuing some collaborations and work, and we're also doing some, some large-scale image analysis um, on Amazon as well. So with that, um, let me turn it over to Dina, uh, who's going to give a demo, or uh, maybe I'll take a question. Yep. Uh, Alan? I can only react to that as a product developer. Um, I don't care. I'm, I'm going to go to the to a service that's cheapest, that's best. That the API is what I care about. The stability of the service itself. Right. 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 Right, right. Let, right. Let, let me answer that with a specific example, right? So, um, in order to do a de novo sequencing alignment assembly, you need a big RAM machine, right? And Amazon's offer, uh, Amazon computing offers you with a 250. Two, no, 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 I'm asking, I'm, I'm telling you a specific example of. Right. Yes. Trying 
All right. Right. I mean, so it's uh, you know it kind of boiled down to how much resources we have and what uh, what we have. So so to some extent, we were able to create a product that works. And and uh, the amount of resources on Amazon, the type of instances we have, best suited for the problem. We you know once Azure or some other sort of cloud provider has the kind of instances we can actually use, then then we can switch to other providers. So uh, can you but, uh, okay. I'm not sorry. I, can I can I try? Right. Right. So that. Can I try a gentler approach? Yes. Um, you know, uh, I would say people do care, right? And and for a couple of reasons. You know, one is that they may have for free a compute resource in some location which is not Amazon, right? And so having uh, an ability to multiplex or, or switch between uh, types of back-end resources, I think ultimately is, is in your best interest. Um, and the, the other is that everyone cares about performance, right? And so if the you know, check is going to Amazon or it's an allocation through a government agency or, or whatever, you know, um, I think you want a way to meter um, how things are going. Right, and, and actually, you have a huge opportunity here. Um, with this type of workload, you have the equivalent of, you know, in what in astronomy would be standard candles. You know, you have elements of execution that you're gonna be farming out to different places that in many cases you know will be of equal units of work, right? And so if you build a profiling interface into this, then you can give feedback, you know, to the, the people who are using it about how how much value are they extracting from any given resource? So. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, uh, Sharice? We're just using the API. I mean, as as David said, you know, we're. I mean, so I guess the question. I mean, most Rackspace, for instance, doesn't it support the EC2 API, or does it? Not? I mean, so I, th I think a lot of these providers do actually. So you might not. It might not be. I mean, it, it it's not. It's not an open standard necessarily. But yeah, I, I think a lot of people do support this API. Let me just jump in with one comment so we can move this along. Uh, this is a great discussion, and the point that Ravi is trying to make is we built an initial solution based on ease of access to resources and a very specific target market and solution that we're, that we're addressing. And I think there's any sort sets of directions we can take this in. I think that's you know valid for sort of future discussion. So these are all good points. Did I take it away? Okay. So uh, b before I give the demo, I just uh, we thought we would give a little bit of scientific background on that. I mean, we have been hearing about VCF files, fast queues, um, and Globus Genomics is a is a vertical solution, and and we wanted to see where exactly this fits, what kind of research uh, our users are actually involved in and kind of set a little bit of context before jumping on a, a quickly on a use case and then how, uh, and then actually showing some, um, some interfaces there. Um, typically, in a, in a translational research uh, project, you, um, uh, the patients, you know, the researcher or a doctor basically selects a cohort of patients that they are interested in and um, they get all the information. Uh, ad administrative process starts with that. This is a typical pipeline that I'm, I'm talking about. And then once they have a set of patients that they're interested to, uh, to, to uh, look at, then they get, the next is the, the clinical data collection phenotype, where they're collecting um, uh, details, imaging data or clinical data, uh, symptoms, different clinical data sets that they collect. Um, and once they have that, then comes the next gen sequencing. So they, they get the tissue samples. The, the, I mean, it's a small uh, pop up here, but the, there's a lot of things involved in here in that particular step where uh, the sequence, they get tissue samples, sent it to the sequencing centers, uh, they get the sequencing done, um, and then uh, once the sequence data comes back, um, they, they would basically do analysis on that, 
identify what variants the patient sequence data might have, um, and which, which is basically the VCF file. Uh, so the end result of this step would, would end into VCF file where uh, they would know what are the different variations in the patient's uh, sequence data. And once they have that, then they would, uh, there's more downstream analysis involved where they would, uh, out of the millions of variants that usually you get out of these analysis, they're trying to make sense, they're trying to prioritize them see if they, if they are in the coding region. I mean, if there are any genes that are, basically they're trying to find out candidate genes out of them. Um, and, and once they, uh, they, they do the genotype-phenotype connection, then they basically want to uh, come up with better diagnosis based on that or, or basically get some more sequencing done for those patients uh, based on the results of analysis. And, and, the, and basically the pipeline continues. I mean, this is just a, a very higher level. I hope there are no doctors in this room there. So, <laughs> so uh, this is a very higher level um, pipeline. Uh, and basically where Globus Genomics fits here is in, in the next gen sequence analysis. I mean, this is, this is a big pipeline in itself out of this whole, I mean, we're not, when we say Globus Genomics is giving an end-to-end -end solution, it's basically the end-to-end -end solution Within the uh, within the next gen sequencing, which is just one step in the complete picture. Um, so, before jumping into the demo, a quick example use case. We started working with Bill Dobbins, that uh, lab. Uh, he was at UC before, and then he moved to uh, uh, Seattle, University of Washington, Seattle. And the use case is very typical. Uh, he was getting sequencing done from three different sequence centers, uh, and he would then wait for weeks. Uh, to get the disks back uh, using FedEx. Once they have them uh, in the lab, they would then mount them in the local storage, make it available on the local cluster, and then would analyze them one by one, uh, depending on how many resources that they have. Um, so they needed, when, when we started working with them, they needed a, um, a, a easy way of, of managing their data uh, so that they can move the data around easily share that data with their other collaborators and, and also scale their analysis uh, for a faster analysis. They would usually get um, sequencing done in batches. I mean, this is also very uh, uh, common across all the researchers we have been working on, working with. They send 30, 40, or 50 uh, patient sequences out for sequencing. They get all of them together back, and then they're just analyzing one after another based on the amount of resources that they have in the lab. So with, with that use case in mind, we started working on Globus Genomics as a vertical solution that basically addresses from, when we say end to end, basically from the sequencing center to all the way uh, to, uh, till, we, till they get the variants for the patient's data. So it involves data movement, data management, trans, um, analysis of data, scalability, any compute issues. So it provides, Globus Genomics basically provides uh, an end-to-end -end solution for this typical use case of an action sequencing data analysis. Um, with that, I'll just jump into the actual demo um, uh, with, with, um, uh, that we have. Do I have to move it around? Or? Yeah, you have to move it. But then I won't be able to see it, I guess. Ah. Right. Yeah. Can we collect? The, Yeah, can you do that? Okay. Wow, it's a small one. <laughs> Uh, this is not the best resolution, probably. For uh, what shall we do? Do you want to change the resolution a little bit? No, you can't. I think. Oh, let's give it a try. Can we increase the resolution a little bit because the website is? Is this, uh, is this good? 
I don't think it's uh, flickering a little bit, right? Yeah, it's good. This one? No. I think it's good. Hold on. All right. Okay, so um, with with global genomics, basically the um, what we what, what we're doing here is we're integrating Globus Online uh, with um, with Galaxy. So Galaxy has been widely used in the in the biomedical research community, where um, uh, for for basically analysis. Um, this is the interface for Ga for Galaxy. We uh, we take Galaxy's. Um, uh, tool out out of the box. We have made a lot of modifications to it, and added uh, a lot of to, uh, tools on the left hand side. They'll see. So the interface basically shows you. Um, it it provides an, any tool that you can run from a command line. It can be scripts or any any third party tools that you might have installed can be basically wrapped into Galaxy as tools, and those are basically arranged here. What you see on the left hand side, various different tools. This is uh, specifically catered toward the next-gen uh, sequence analysis. Uh, all these tools allow you to do a different analysis on the data sets. So uh, the first challenge is to address the data movement. Sequencing centers have the data. They sh ship it by FedEx. So we want to eliminate that. So we have integrated Globus Online. Uh, so we have worked with sequencing center like Perkin Elmer, Broad Institute, UC Sequencing Center, various different sequencing centers, and we have set up Globus Online endpoints there. And it, uh, so basically they, uh, and once you have the endpoint, they, they, you can, the users can then directly access their data on the sequencing centers, move them into Galaxy, and, and then um, they can analyze their data. They can uh, run different workflows here. Um, you, and there, there, there are a lot of tools that come uh, with Galaxy, but then we have also added a lot of uh, tools that were of interest for our uh, users. Uh, you'll see a few tools that are, are widely used right now uh, by our users that, are, uh, that we show here. And then, um, like Ravi was mentioning, that there are best practices workflows that we have, uh, that we provide to the users that they can directly start using those workflows or if they, or they can import. I'll quickly show all, all these things, but they can direct, uh, some of the workflows that you see here, um, they, they are all best practices workflows used in the community. They can directly use them or they can import, modify them, add their own tools to them, um, filters, and uh, can be attached, and, and they can do various things. So one, uh, so the, to start with, I just want to see, uh, on the left-hand side, you can see global data transfer. It's, it's added as another tool within Galaxy. So the users uh, can basically select um, their endpoints. Uh, I just have a, we have a sequencing center, dummy sequencing center, the, uh, the endpoint that, that we're showing here. The users can select their endpoints uh, from the sequencing center. This is the data on the sequencing center that then they can select and move them into, into Galaxy uh, and start analyzing that. So I'll just quickly create a new, um, so in, in Galaxy there is um, a concept of history. So every time you run an analysis, you can uh, capture that in a history on the, right, on the right panel here. So I'll create a new history. Um, And I'll just select the files that I need for this analysis. And, uh, and you can see uh, the files appear on the right-hand side when we... Um, so, the, in, so in the background, this user account is tied to the Globus Online user account. And when they're, when they're transferring these files, uh, they're, they're being transferred using Globus Online from a sequencing center directly into the Globus, on the, the endpoint that we have in, in, on the Galaxy instance. So the, the data is, and you can monitor them here from within Galaxy, or uh, you, can even, um, you can even go to Globus online, and you can, uh, you can view your transfers that actually you initiate from, uh, from here. And once that, uh, so this, so that, that's a really convenient um, uh, thing, I mean, especially for, you, for um, researchers who, have been, who usually have to wait for, for weeks to get, this, uh, get their data into the lab and then mount it somewhere and then uh, analyze them. Now they can directly get their data into Galaxy 
uh, and then they can run analysis on this uh, immediately. So in addition to, uh, so this, this is an example of, of transferring just individual files if they are just taking, let's say, one exome that they want to immediately start analysis on, they can do that uh, from, from here. Or other, um, so the other option that they have, they can also do this transfer from Globus Online directly. So um, once you go to, go there, you can, you, uh, you can select your endpoints you have access to, and you should be able to select um, the whole, so one, one tip, another example that I just want to highlight with this is that if they have batches of exomes, if they have let's say 50 or 60 exomes sitting in the sequencing center and they want all of them to be moved and archived somewhere, then they can, uh, so we, we uh, added that functionality in, 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 uh, in Galaxy. With, with Galaxy's endpoint, they should be able to basically select um, all the exomes, let's say if they have three exomes here, and if they want to move them, they should be, uh, let me just move it in a scratch space. Um, so th on the right hand side is the, is the instance uh, that is, is the Galaxy endpoint that, uh, that we're using behind the demo. So I can create a, a new folder here. I mean, let's, let me just call you exomes, and I should be able to get all the exomes transferred here. And the advantage of this is that once you uh, go to Galaxy, I'll, I'll, um, once you go to the Galaxy here, you can then make all these exomes immediately available in your Galaxy. So Galax in, in Galaxy, there's a concept of data libraries. So you would be able to uh, create a data library out of the data sets that you just moved using Globus Online in the backend. Um, all you have to uh, do here would be just to go to the admin panel uh, and say, I want to manage this data library. You can create a new data library. Um, and depending on when, the, on when these files are moved here, I mean, I'll just pick a, 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 another one that I have just transferred previously. So once you know where you have moved the, uh, moved the data on the Galaxy instance, you should be able to uh, add these data sets within um, Galaxy. So it, uh, Galaxy provides an option of just pointing to the files that you have on the, on the disk. So using the global sample and endpoint on this Galaxy instance will just say use these files from, uh, from uh, this endpoint. And you can even decide with whom you want to share these data libraries or you want to just make it public. Uh, for all your users of this end, uh, of this galaxy, it I mean the it, this is this has been uh, you can see this these three uh, folders that I moved using Globus Online immediately becomes available for the users uh, to actually um, you, so you can then select these files, uh, use them for analysis yeah, immediately after the transfers are complete. So this uh, is very useful. I can show one example where we did it with, with Ken O'Neill's lab. They had about 60 exomes, and we were basically able to move all of them into Galaxy using Globus Online uh, with a bulk transfer, and, and then uh, they can selectively use which exomes they want to analyze from, from this interface here. So once you have, um, just go, let's go, go back to the front end. So once you have the data, so I, I moved these data sets here. Um, you, you basically then can select a workflow. One, uh, I, I will pick this one exome uh, analysis workflow. This is one of the first workflows that we worked on with, with Bill Dobbins' lab, which basically, um, I'll show you briefly. Um, I think it's changed. Uh, So you can you can take the uh, I'll just import this uh, into my so basically you can take a best practices workflow or even the workflows that other users have shared with you and you can then import it and then edit it and you can you can uh, make changes to that so once you import it um, you can go to your workflow so I have a bunch of workflows now you can just take take that and you can edit that workflow if you want to um, what you see here is a a typical best practices exome analysis workflow. I mean, it's it's a big workflow, but if you if you break it down, there are three uh, main sections in this workflow. You have patient sequence data, 
that gets compared against a uh, reference genome, you identify, once you compare it with the reference genome, you identify the, so the second step is identification of variations in the patient's sequence, and the third step would be once you know the variations, you can annotate those variations saying are they um, important variants, do they fall in some kind of a gene that uh, probably would get broken if, if there is a variation on that particular location. So there are three major steps in this, which starts with the raw sequence data, compares it with uh, reference genome, and then calls the variants on it. Um, and you can, so we'll just take this one workflow. Um, let me, uh, it's the same workflow that I have. Yeah, one minute more. Okay. So you can, um, you can, let me pick another one that has some. So once you have this data set, uh, you, can, you can then, so one thing I have to do is, Galaxy allows you to map your data set. You can say what type of data this is that you're, trans uh, that you're transferred. Let me quickly edit that. So I can, I, I'll, I'll have to just say, okay, this is a FASTQ file, which I think we've been hearing today. So I, if I declare this as a FASTQ file, and uh, once you do that, I will get some, so I have the input data set. I want the reference genome and, ref, and some variant databases that I want to run it against. So this is where I go to my data libraries. I'm, I have some uh, uh, files there from where I can move. So I have variant databases here. I'll just, uh, these are all moved using Global Sound Line into Galaxy uh, in advance. And I'll just need these two files and I can say import to the current history. And uh, let's go back. And you can see I have four files now in my history. And you can see these are pre-populated because I have, set, I have set the data types for these files. These get pre-populated uh, there. And then any other, uh, so these are all uh, correctly uh, added here. So I'm using two reference SNP files to compare it against, and then everything else just remains same. And then you can run this workflow. So what you, I mean, basically within a few minutes, users can get their data from the sequencing center analyze them um, uh, using cloud resources here. I and mean, you can scale these as, as many as you want. And right now, we, uh, recently we did an analysis for Onel Lab where we were able to get about, uh, typically these workflows take about 24 hours. Each workflow will take about 24 hours to complete. And we have run about uh, 40 exomes in parallel uh, using Amazon resources recently for the Onel Lab when they had uh, their data set from sequencing center. So that, I and mean, then you can monitor, so this is what basically it shows. You can see it's now map, it's comparing it against uh, the reference genome and it, it would complete in a few, uh, few hours. So that is basically the integration from data movement from sequencing center to the analysis. And once you are um, done with your analysis, you can look at the, um, the output files. You can see uh, quickly, uh, you can, So this is a, um, a variant file. This is actually an annotated variant file where uh, it gives you what are the different variations in the human, um, uh, in the patient's uh, data set, in the sequence data, and then you can see which genes get affected. Uh, you can add different filters in it, and you can do a lot of um, analysis. So we do, uh, I mean, it's, it's not just from the infrastructure point of view. We're also pro we're actively involved in, in working with our researchers in, in helping them through um, which tools to be used, uh, what they can do with, uh, with different tools, uh, knowledge transfer from our experience working with one group, with the other group. With Dobbins, when we created the first workflow, and then when we went to Ken uh, O'Neill's lab, they were basically able to just reuse the workflow uh, from the previous collaboration and just run, uh, start using it immediately, and then we made a few modifications in the downstream analysis. So that kind of shows you the complete uh, solution that we have, and we'll be adding probably more tools going forward soon. So that's all I have to show right now. And um, Just uh, thanks, Sina. Um, that's all we have. Um, if you're interested, you know, um, the sign-up page is at globus.org slash genomics, and uh, 
uh, these are uh, people you would talk to if you if, if you find us uh, in the hallway or wherever. If you have more questions, uh, feel free to stop uh, and ask us. And um, I, I wanted to kind of thank uh, the team, the core team that uh, that made this possible. And uh, they're all here. Um, uh, our fearless leader, Paul, uh, Dina, and, and Lukas, Alex, um, and uh, of course Ian uh, kind of helped us to kind of uh, uh, have this uh, successful product launch last week. Thank you for that. And uh, um, I don't know if I have, I don't think I have time for questions, but. We'll take one, one or two questions. We're running a little few minutes over. If there are any questions. All right, so I'm assuming you're all signing up, so <laughs> thank you. Okay, hey, thanks. Okay, we're uh, breaking now and uh, we'll pick up again.